What it do? This is your brother Bishop of Bishop's Own TV, and today's topic is the public lynching of Kevin Samuels. Yes, you heard me. The public lynching of Kevin Samuels. Now, first and foremost, I just want to get this out of the way. Rest in peace to our brother Kevin Samuels. Yes, I'm saying brother Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace, brother. Um, I send my condolences and my love to his family and friends. I didn't know Kevin Samuels, but, you know, I felt like he gave a large piece of his life to the public. And I'm just being respectful. That's all. Just being respectful. That's all. <clears throat> With that said, as you saw my last video, there was a lot of celebration amongst black women and black men of his passing, which you know, I wasn't surprised, but still to see that it, to, to me is very sickening and um, just just shows how toxic the black community is or not the black community entirely, but just a significant amount of our people within our community. And, you know, <laughs> it's so toxic that even when I made that video, I lost some subscribers. You know, out of all the videos I've made, that one video about Kevin Samuels, Mr. Samuels, caused some of my subscribers to jump ship. <laughs> Which, let me just say for the record, let me just get this out of the way. I don't give a shit. If you didn't like my Kevin Samuels video, I don't care. I don't make content to appease the public. I don't, I don't make that kind of content. I make whatever I feel, whatever on my mind, and I speak it. I speak it unapologetically. I speak my truth. I assess certain things within our community, outside of the community. I just, I just observe things in the world, and I speak on it. So that makes me think: What is it about Kevin Samuels that has our community so divided? What is it about Kevin Samuels that just ruffles people's feathers what is it about this man because as far as I know Kevin Samuels didn't advocate violence against black women Kevin Samuels didn't commit murder he wasn't a mad serial killer let's just let's, let's just face the facts let's just let's just tell it how it is Kevin Samuels doesn't have a record that we know about of domestic abuse he didn't go out here saying kill, murder all black women. What? So why is Kevin Samuels hated so badly? Why is he hated so much? He's loved by a lot of people in the community, but why is he hated so much? So much so to the point where people were out here celebrating his death. And not only that, but even one of my comments. You had this brother right here who just subscribed to my page. And I don't, I don't care if he leave. Bye. Bye. But then he sat up there and was like, look, I don't think he deserved to live. <laughs> you don't think this man deserved to live. Fine. That's how you feel. Like I told him, that's weak. But that's how you feel. That's how you feel. I'm not here to change anybody's mind, but I'm just here to kind of analyze the situation. Because what I've noticed within our society here in America is that when a black man is unapologetic, straightforward, goes against the status quo, in that of one who doesn't conform to society standards. A black man. When a black man does that, especially a black straight male, he is considered public enemy number one. And even a lot of our people gravitate to that negativity to the point that they have a strong disdain a strong hate for a person who I mean did he really deserve that energy because let's really analyze Kevin Samuels who is Kevin Samuels Kevin Samuels became famous or infamous because of the content that he made about black women now before he became famous or infamous for um, conversing or debating black women 
He did the same thing with black men. Now, let me ask you, how come he didn't get the same type of publicity, publicity, good or bad, when he was focusing solely on black men? When he was holding black men accountable, why didn't he receive the same kind of backlash and notoriety when it was solely black men? And if you look at his earlier content, he was actually more honest, more harsh, quote unquote harsh to black men than he was was to black women. Why is that? Hmm. So let's flip this around. Let's go. Let's go back to who he was, who a lot of people um, knew him as. Or so they think. So he was perceived as which was uh, a one, a male who hated black women and was probably gay because that was that was things that people put on him to degrade him. He hated black women and he was homosexual. He was a homosexual. He was a black woman. And any man who agrees with some things that he says is, in fact, a homosexual and they hate black women. Even though I supported some things he said, I agree with a lot of stuff that he said, honestly. I didn't agree with everything, but I agree with a lot of stuff he said. And I'm married to a black woman. It's not perfect, but that's my wife. I love my wife. Happy life, happy wife. We have black children. What's more powerful than that? Oh, and I've, and I've only dated black women in my life. I love black women. Black women are my priority. I think I said this before. But all of a sudden, as soon as I mention Kevin Samuels, I hate black women. Okay, okay, okay. Let's look at it like this. If if Kevin Samuels truly hated black women, why would he spend so much time engaging and conversing with black women? See. Let me let me break y'all off something. A man who invests that much time into conversing and conversating or having conversations with black women doesn't hate black women. You might not agree with everything that he says pertaining to black women, but if he really didn't give a damn about black women, he wouldn't engage with them at all. He would engage with white women. You know, the man, <laughs> he wouldn't even allow women other women who were calling to his show of other ethnicities to bash black women now i know you're saying well yeah he didn't allow it because he was bashing black women but here's the thing kevin samuels didn't call black women like he didn't call random black women and then started harassing them black women called into his show do you understand they called into his show and they called into his show to either a Seek advice, seek counsel on black men or B, debate Kevin Sanders. And there was no shortage of either category. There was no shortage. So ask yourself, what was it about Kevin Samuels that made so many black women call into his show every damn day for years now at this point, for years? And guess what? I guarantee you some of those black women for good or bad are going to miss calling into this show. Hmm. See, Kevin Samuels listened to black women. He listened to them. He didn't he didn't agree with them all the time. And let's really look at the, the, the premise of his show. Because see, y'all looking at it on a surface surface level. Y'all are judging his show based off clips. Y'all are judging this man's show based off preconceived notions, based off emotions, and based off of bits and pieces of clips taken out of context. He hates black women. He talks nasty to black women. Well, in a lot of cases, he matches these these particular women. He matches their energy. So if a black woman comes on his show to debate him and starts off very disrespectful he's going to be disrespectful back if a black woman calls into his show a sister calls into his show and say I want a man with six figures I can't find a good man good men don't exist how is that how do y'all not look at that and say but damn good men don't exist because 
I guess because y'all think good black a good black man doesn't exist. It's rare to find good black men, even though there's a <laughs> despite all the criticisms that black men get, there are plenty of good black men out here. There are plenty of good black men out here. So what Kevin Samuels does is this, and, and this is where I'm really getting with this, is he puts a mirror up to these women's faces and, and asks them, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? You don't want an average man? You don't want a blue collar worker? You want a man with six figures that make a uh, hundred thousand yearly, which isn't common. You want that man? What do you bring to the table? How? What do you look like? Because this man was an image consultant, so he understands what a large percentage of men, especially um, high value men, quote unquote high value men. Or let's just not even say because a lot of people get offended by that word. Don't even say high value men, but very wealthy men. Come on, let's be honest. Wealthy men. Women want wealthy, rich men. If they want rich to wealthy men, what do these rich and wealthy men look for? That was the premise of his show. And some sisters felt like they deserved men that was out of their tax bracket. They felt that way. And Kevin Samuels was just trying to tell them, like, look, you might not can get this brother, but you can get Joe Schmo. And ain't nothing wrong with Joe Schmo. But see, in our community, honesty and accountability is the worst thing to a significant amount of black people in our community. It is. Accountability and honesty is detrimental. It's beneficial, but a lot of people take it in a way where it's detrimental. Again, people were celebrating Kevin Samuel's death because this is just what he did, what he, what he brought to the table. Not saying he was right all the time, and he even admitted to that. But you would have sworn the brother was out here raping women. I've seen R. Kelly. R. Kelly received less backlash. People made jokes when he went to prison. But even, even some people had empathy. And I hate to say this. Because I'm not disrespecting these brothers. I got love for these brothers. But you have rappers that have built careers off degrading black women have done far worse than Kevin Samuels. They have made careers off degrading black women, sexualizing black women, and they receive their flowers when they die. They don't have the same backlash. I'm just being honest. I don't recall a lot of black women disrespecting Biggie Smalls when he passed away. I don't recall a lot of black women disrespecting DMX when he passed away. Huh? And I got love for DMX and Biggie Smalls. These are some of my favorite rappers, so I'm not shitting on Biggie Smalls or DMX. But even they, come on, man. You Even the FBG Dukes and King Bonds didn't, didn't, didn't receive this kind of uh, disrespect. The man ain't even been buried. You understand what I'm saying? And I would feel that way about anybody. Like, look, make no mistake. I come into Reet and Sheed and you know, some of these other individuals, even the Umar Johnsons, I don't, I ain't, I ain't a fan. Yvette Carnell, um, the Legion of Coon, you know what I'm saying? The Legions of Grifter, you know, Dane Calloway's, I don't rock with them. I think they're fake. I think they're, or I think they're a cancer to our community. But if something was to ever happen to them, I would not be out here. I would not be on here celebrating their death. I would not be out here celebrating that because I understand like they got a family. And despite the criticism, despite the spankings that I give them just by exposing them for the frauds they are, I have certain level of respect for their families, not to just not to just shit on them. Because once a person is dead, there's no coming back from that. You understand? It ain't about keeping the same energy. The person is dead. You know? And with that said though. Their energy still lives on. 
if you thought this was a win for y'all, which is just some six though, but if you thought that was a win for y'all, I, I hate to bust y'all bubble, but once once his once his message is put out there, it's put out there. That ain't going away. We still celebrate, you know, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, you know, the Panthers. We still celebrate their, their, their you know, their messages. And they've been long gone. Which leads me to this. Subconsciously and consciously, the reason why so many people have a disdain for Kevin Samuels is again, America has a ritual, has a tradition of publicly lynching black men, whether it be physical or symbolically. We have a thirst to publicly lynch black men. And if you think this is any different, just look at the level of hatred. Again, the level of hatred that this man got, because I'm not saying he's Malcolm X. And let's be let's be real. When Malcolm X was living, a lot of people didn't like him. A lot of people in the black community didn't rock with Malcolm X. Some people still don't rock with Malcolm X to this day. You know, a lot of people didn't rock with Marcus Garvey. When he was alive. But see, now we're talking in hindsight. Now Malcolm X is looked at as a as a hero for black people. He wasn't looked at he wasn't looked like that. You know, he he wasn't that type of person. He wasn't perceived as a hero then. You know, even Martin Luther King to an extent. Of course, the black community um, rallied around Martin Luther King more than they did Malcolm X during that time but what I'm saying is this over time and when new generations arise people start to empathize more with certain individuals that at the time when they were alive were considered controversial and the only reason why a large percentage a large percentage of these individuals are considered controversial is because these are black men that are outspoken and that speak against the status quo yeah Kevin Samuels was now here speaking against injustice and, and um, you know, a racist system. But what he was alluding to, what he was um, advocating for, is actually a fight against racial injustice. It's, it's, it's a fight against the system. Not directly, but indirectly, because believe it or not, Kevin Samuels' main point was to bring black, black families together. He opened dialogue between black men and black women that was much needed. Some sisters got it, some sisters didn't. Some some men got it, some men didn't. That's okay. It's not meant for everybody. But he opened that conversation. Conversations were had. You know, I've seen people do the same thing. I've seen people publicly lynch Spike Lee. Don't act like y'all didn't. A lot of a lot of our people do. I've seen people publicly lynch Ice Cube as a recent. Again, when you're unapologetic and you go against the status quo as a black man, there's no room for empathy. There's no room for empathy. Some of our people will be as harsh or worse than they would against a Joe Biden. Again, any of these white people that are the architects of structural racism don't even get that same heat. So. That's all I got to say. You know, if, 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 if some more people don't like what I got to say, fine. I don't care. Like I said, I'm not making content to appease y'all. I'm not making, I'm not making that kind of content. Sorry, but not sorry. If you disagree, and I'm welcome, I'm, I, I welcome disagreements. I welcome agreements. I welcome disagreements. Let's have a conversation. But what I won't allow is for people to disrespect the dead. If I felt like Kevin Samuels was out here, you know, really harming black women, then I, I, I can understand that. And what I mean, I'm not talking about just being honest because you didn't like the man's uh, delivery. I think that's kind of weak. How soft people are that they don't like this man's delivery. You know, one more thing. Kevin Sammons' delivery is no different than, you know, my father or my grandfather. And that kind of shows how how absent a black, a strong black male figure is in our society. 
This man was 56 years old. Yeah, he came off harsh sometimes. Did that warrant him not being on this earth anymore? You got to understand, we live in urgent times. So sometimes delivery <laughs> might come off way too urgent. But that's just the kind of environment that we're living in. You know, it is it is a very toxic time between black men and black women. And I'm not saying black men are right and black women are wrong. But that there is a disconnect between black men and black women that needs to be addressed. And I can honestly say at least Kevin Samuels tried to address that. And some bridges were being connected between black men and black women. Just go look at five or six videos in full context. And tell me if you have the same kind of disdain. Don't look at YouTube videos of people's perception about him. A lot of those people looking for clout. Just look at the videos directly from his channel. And tell me if you tell me if your perception of him won't change. That's it. Like and subscribe. And until next time, holla.